Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 8th. First up, I got a request from George Herman to do an update on the Curiosity and the news conference they had back on December 3rd. I watched the whole thing. It was around an hour and ten minutes. They could have summarized it in about ten minutes easily. Um, nothing exciting as far as all the hope they got up from the previous news conferences to where they said they had an announcement. The biggest thing they found was traces of carbon, which may or may not have been from the planet Mars or may have been something brought along. They also found something called a perchlorate and different um, chlorine carbon compounds, which you could call basically an organic compound, but one of the scientists when asked a question about it said that he thought more than likely the experiment itself might have actually caused these organic compounds to be formed. And the clue that tells them that what they're looking at is probably not life is the fact that when you're dealing with organic compounds, if there is something living or ever was something living, these things come in a variety. And when you just do a soil sample and find one particular organic compound and no other organic compounds around, not likely what you're finding is any kind of clue to life or anything like that. They did find, like I suggested, they're probably going to find some kind of minerals or compounds at a higher ratio than they expected, um, which is, in this case, actually isn't really totally unexpected. They found deuterium, or actually deuterium high. Well, it's heavy water. I'll just call it heavy water. They found it at about four times the normal rate that you would on the planet Earth, which to me is not totally unexpected when you have a planet with a little bit lower gravity. It's not going to hold on to lightweight stuff as much as heavyweight stuff. And because water can form in a vapor, of course, the heavier atoms of, or the heavier molecules of water will tend to escape a little bit more than the, um, or the lighter molecules of water will tend to escape a little bit more than the heavier molecules of water. So that's normal for a planet with light gravity. Just like the Earth, we can't hold on to hydrogen or helium. Too lightweight for the gravity pulling. Floats up into outer space and then tends to disappear. So all in all, I mean, it was an interesting news conference, but nothing to get really overexcited about. Hopefully on the rest of its journey towards the mountain that it's headed towards, it'll find some more interesting things along the way. This show is basically today going to be about gadgets, though, so let's get right onto the gadgets. And first off, I want to thank the really strong participant in this, Bangalore Babel. So I'm going to get to him last of all because I've got a lot of material he actually helped. I, I wouldn't have much of a gadget show if it wasn't for what he included. I did get some people to participate, and that was great. The Moto Rick suggested a USB wall plug, which is a combination of 110 outlets and USB plugs. I'd seen some modular wall jacks before to where you could take and add components together to make like cat5 combinations with the 110 volt plugs but this is the first combo plug-in port and this is just a USB charging station basically it's not for USB connections as far as I know it's just basically to use as a power station but that's what most people use most of the time anyway they charge up their gadgets so that was pretty good thank you motor rec and then McGraw Tim Talked about a gadget for under $25 would be a bottle capper if you're into making beer, wine, or even soda pop on your own. I looked on Amazon, well under 20 bucks you can get bottle cappers for. You can get 144 caps to go with it for like under 8 bucks. So pretty good deal if you're into home brewing of any kind. And then from Glover International, uh, he likes the MakerBot. And that's a little bit on the expensive. That's well over a thousand bucks, but boy, would I like to get something like that. And I guess if you were with a group, you could all chip in together and get something like a MakerBot and be able to make your own stuff out of plastic and resin. That would be a really cool gift to get. And then my buddy Tony KD4YSA suggested two cameras that he'd like to see in his gadget list. That's the Drift Ghost and the Contour Plus 2. And I would also add the GoPro 3 Black. I think really the silver and white you can pass on other than being a reduced size. They're basically, it seems to me, they're just a glorified um, GoPro 2 is what they are. And let's get to Bangalore Bobble. He had a lot of stuff here to include on his. First off, the uh, Sony DC, DSC HX200V camera that he suggests. That's a little bit more on the expensive side. And then he suggests for a flashlight, there's a Bruder LED lenser. Now I looked at various models of those. I think you can get the Model 3 for around 30 bucks, but if you want to get the top models, they go all the way up to 100 bucks. I would always suggest a good flashlight. It's always good to have around. And then he suggests the Victorinox pocket knife. He likes the Huntsman model. I like the Tinkerer myself. It only has like four basic tools on it, but that's all you need. I don't really like the extra tools that some of them have, but either one of those would be a good pocket knife somewhere in. If you look for sales, that'd be somewhere between the $20 and $40 range typically. And then 
the Zippo hand warmers. I have two generic hand warmers that are similar to the Zippo. Uh, only thing about that is, like it says in the instructions, keep it in your pocket. Don't hold it in your hand very long because they do tend to get very hot. But yeah, they will warm your fingers up really well when you're on any kind of a uh, cold weather outing of any type. And then the last thing he talks about, and I looked this up, various um, qualities of this too. It's called a cashmere Pashima shawl. But basically it's just a glorified, very long, very wide scarf. And it's made out of silk and cashmere wool. And if you look at the cheap quality ones, you can get a lot of them for around 10 bucks, but they don't seem to work that well. But if you look in the $30 and above range, at least on Amazon from what I checked, um, you can get some pretty good ones. And that can be used all the way from a neck warmer to a, a upper body wrap. So if you're caught out in the cold and you don't have maybe a liner in your jacket or some cold weather gear with you, this thing can be, because it is silk and cashmere wool, it can be folded up into a tiny, tiny package and kept in your saddlebags with you just in case of emergency. And I think a long, wide scarf that keeps you warm is always a good thing to keep along, especially if you can end up storing it in a small area, small package. So anyway, that's it for the gadget show. And I think I mentioned it before, but... Um, Navy Thomas 8 asked me to do an update on Voyager 1 as it's leaving the heliosphere and going into interstellar space. So what I'm going to do for next week's show is I'm going to concentrate as one of the main subjects on explaining what the heliosphere is, what the heliopause is, and where actually Voyager 1 is headed. And Voyager 2 is right behind it. So kind of trying to explain. And a lot of this is still conjecture, too. Even some of the ideas of what's going to happen are just basically guesses because we've never had a craft enter into interstellar space before. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Um, check the links down below. I've got links to most of the stuff I was talking about. There will also be a link sometime in the next 24 hours to any supplemental for those of you that want a little bit more information, stuff that may not be included in the TDD report or stuff that may be included in a future TDD report. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.